Hi, good afternoon. My name is Janet Borland and I'm the director of the Association for Nahara. Thank you for joining us today for Coffee with Nahara. I am here with our sponsor from Swarkit, Neil Mamley. He is the head of growth and we are so excited to have you here with us today, Neil, um, walking us through your really cool app and and i'm so excited to to see this being that i worked in hr i really wish that we had this tool 15 years ago so to see an app about meditation and wellness this is super cool everyone that's going to be watching you're in for a treat and neil i hand it over to you awesome thank you janet i appreciate the uh the warm intro and to the nahara members i appreciate you guys stopping by a, uh, a virtual cheers. I've got water going right now as we record it, but I'm a big coffee fan and I love uh, the name and, and branding. Um, can definitely talk about ourselves. Um, I do want to start with some kind of thought leadership and kind of state of well-being. Um, but before we do any of that, I know the name is always top of mind. What? How do you say it? What does it mean? Um, so it's Swork It. Uh, think of it as Simply Work It. Uh, and that's really you know, our CEO, Ryan, he's the one who built Swarkit 12 years ago, um, identifying a need of, hey, not all fitness and wellness paths are the same, right? It's about overcoming barriers like, I'm, I'm so busy, I don't have time, what do I do? The gym's overwhelming. Like I always use the analogy, if you're at a conference and you step into the gym, that moment of, oh my gosh, every machine's taken, like that's why Swarkit's here. Or um, if you're coming back from an injury um, and you just don't feel like you've got the same body before injury or um, you just had a baby, you know, anything like that's why Swork It's here. Um, if you're looking to get started and looking to really grow um, on your wellness journey, that, you know, that's that's one of the main reasons we came today. Uh, but again, before we go into us, um, I think it's just good to kind of take a pause and look at you know, what's top of mind for everybody. Um, and what we've done is we've pulled a lot of HR and well-being leaders, I think close to 10,000 or so, just to get a sense of like, what what is something your employees are asking or you feel the need to address, you know, in any one of your days. And I kind of highlighted some of the, the major themes that you'll see. Number one, no doubt. I mean, it's, it's borderline part of every conversation now is employee engagement and pro productivity, especially in a digital age with folks remote, um, you know, there's now a trend of silent quitting or absenteeism. You know, that that's a, a big, you know, need to to get in front of. Um, it goes now into talent acquisition and retention. I think post COVID, you know, we lived in a world where you had to have flexibility and remote work to be competitive in the workforce. It's kind of right sizing a bit, and if you see more folks bringing people back into the office. Um, but at the end of the day, an employee is trying to feel valued and empowered. Uh, no question, diversity, equity, inclusion, D and I, you hear it all the time. Um, but truly making that part of, you know, a company's message and brand, promoting diversity, including a workforce is very important as well. Um, and really managing uncertainty, right? Like whether it's political landscape, health, you know, you name it uh, out there. I think we are trying to always stay a step in the head as HR leaders and human leaders uh, to manage that uncertainty. Last piece, you know, a lot of HR and well-being folks are, are just trying to get in front of is flexibility and work-life balance. Um, for us, you know, it's a number of things. It's strong benefits, no doubt. It's the second highest cost behind payroll is a company's benefit system. So those time off, mental health support, you know, expanding on just providing an EAP, right? Like actually having something that sees the high adoption um, is top of mind for an HR team. And then what we did is we paired that with, okay, what are the employees actually asking? So we've pulled employees in our system of what's important to them. And you start to see some overlap. Work-life balance, definitely important. Um, over on my side, we just had our, our second child. He's nine weeks old. My wife's on maternity leave. I work from home. So there's a ton of flexibility in my way to be able to support her. And then our family, you know, as we go, definitely still travel uh, plans and work plans. We're, we're fortunate to have some support there, but that flexibility is very important and something I value as an employee uh, at Swork at Health. Um, benefits, another big one, um, no doubt, right? Like I think it's now become flexibility and personalized benefits to the individual, not just having, okay, we've got medical dental and some worksite products, but 
what is relevant to me as a father of two versus somebody maybe just entering the workforce, maybe somebody aging into the Medicare population, like having benefits that are tailored to the person, not just one size fits all, very important as well. Culture is massive, right? Um, it can significantly impact when you think about the stress that folks take on uh, in their day to day. Managing culture, engagement and retention is super important as well. So I think that gets us grounded into some of the importance, benefits, flexibility, a strong culture um, for me now to start to go into, OK, so let's talk about what Swerkit does and, and how we're relevant. So I'd like to focus a bit on the physical activity side. Um, what are the benefits, right? Like I think you all know, hey, it's important to stay moving and active. Uh, the CDC recommends 150 active minutes in a given week uh, creates healthier habits. Um, but what I try to do is just simplify it and break it down into the big four that we see. Um, and again, from your mind as a leader, what does this mean for my employees? First one is uh, increased productivity. So higher energy levels, increased concentration, speeding up the ability to learn, for those individuals who are staying active. A big one we hear all the time is reduced healthcare costs. Like we see the healthcare costs on the rise. Oftentimes as leaders, we're left with saying, okay, what, what, what can I do, right? Other than cutting programs or even cutting software products, we might be investing in the business because our healthcare costs continue to rise. A stronger and a more immune workforce is a more cost efficient workforce, right? And you think about the four horsemen that uh, Dr. Peter Atia speaks to heart disease, cancer, neurogenerative, and type 2 diabetes. Physical activity can combat, you know, a majority of those. Employee engagement morale is, is a big one as well, right? And, and from our seat, when we think about what we do with companies and work with them doing company-wide challenges, step challenges, engagement, it creates that culture, right? And the cheering on each other, challenging each other, and kind of pushing each other forward um, is just a great environment, you know, for individuals. Swork, it's a pretty remote company, but we always find time on video to either do a group workout or a group meditation or even just kind of um, talk about where we are on our journey and how we can kind of help each other uh, move forward. You know, we mentioned the absenteeism is, is a big issue uh, amongst companies. We found, you know, a more fit workforce uh, is a more present workforce, right? They're missing less work. They have higher morale. Um, you know, they're, they're more communicative and to their needs as well. Um, and so a couple of the, you know, the big importance. And now we're starting to see, because for the longest time, you know, physical fitness sat over here, mental health sat over here. But what we're finding more and more is the benefits on mental health that physical activity can find, right? Not to say don't meditate, right? Like we love that. And I think that's super important. But we've also found the brain health uh, increases because of cardio, uh, you know, we're seeing anywhere from 15, 20% increase after even just an hour of low stress cardio walking. Um, you know, there is an increase in cognitive functions. I think, you know, as you sit there and you think of kind of that positive feeling you feel if the first thing you do when you wake up is move, um, you know, I think that that kind of explains it too. Um, the workforce culture, like being able to have, it front and center to be able to talk about mental health in the office. It breaks down some of the stigma that we see. Um, and then the last big, you know, the big one is, is sleep and recovery. Like having the right amount of strain and activity is increasing REM sleep, which is, you know, super important. Um, again, I mentioned we've got an eight week old, so there's not as much REM sleep going on over here. Uh, but what I have found is if I can mix in naps or if I can do some sort of cardio in the early mornings, um, it does set up my day you know, to be able to kind of recharge and, and kind of make the most of the, uh, the minimal sleep I might have uh, in the night. I'll leave a couple articles as well, just talking about, you know, exercise and, and depression and some of the benefits there. But, you know, I think it tees us up, at least from a Swerkit side to say, fitness has always been at the core of what we do. And now we've expanded into other channels like meditation, nutrition, um, rehab and, and pain prevention. Um, but they all also start to evolve and, and bode together. So, I, you know, tease in, ties into more about us and the Sorka Health side. So, again, we we're founded in, in 2012. We've got about 4 million users on the system today. Um, it's a really cool story. Ryan, again, our founder, he was in a network admin. He was also in the Army Reserves. 
And he created an app because of a need that he found, right? Being able to stay active with such a busy schedule. And here we are 12 years later with the end of the amount of folks that are on the platform today. It was initially a direct to consumer or user app where you could just go on the app store and download it. But over the last couple of years, we've really tailored it to be an employer benefit an admin experience where you can go in and, and see individuals that are using it and truly treat it as a benefit. Across the 4 million users on the platform today, we've got about 300 companies leveraging Swerkit, you know, more and more uh, expanding in the space with Nahara, where we've got a couple um, prospects and, and we'll definitely speak to you all at the annual conference a bit too. Um, global like it is a global benefit you know so we we go outside of the us we've got about 14 languages that we support today it takes us anywhere two to three months to add another language um, integrating with other wearables is an important one for us where apple health google fit fitbit strava all that data can feed into swork it so it's not then seen as another digital health solution. Like we can truly aggregate all the data that somebody's doing. Um, like I still have my Peloton, I wear a Whoop band, and then I'll show you in my instance when I when I demo Swerk it how that data starts to feed in, and then what you as you know a benefits leader or HR leader can do in terms of challenges and, and kind of make sure that that data is used, you know, for for good and and to promote you know additional activity. We'll always have Ask a Trainer webinars as well. I'll show you some of our, our calendar, but that's where we talk about like the manual intervention in the app. Um, and when you're going through the app, you always have the ability to ask questions or, or speak to um, an expert as well. And then a, you know, a metric I always like to highlight is our engagement rate. Um, so for any individuals activating and using our app, we see engagement, which is somebody doing at least 150 active minutes um, or three workouts or movements in a week is about 50%. So a bit above industry average and it's one that you know we're very proud of as well it's not a solution that you all would purchase and use that gets left on the shelf like we're very eager to make sure our individuals are activating it the four pieces for us how we touch on wellness again physical activities we've got over a thousand on-demand workouts and movements have mental health in there as well. Meditation, body scans, gratitude training, um, you know, a pretty big collection that's growing there. Uh, musculoskeletal health, so pelvic floor, balance, fall prevention, injury prevention, and rehab all available in the app. And then the newest uh, library that we've included is our nutrition library. Um, updates constantly, but a lot of things from chronic disease management, diet tips, best practices, and then we've got an Ask a Nutritionist series that updates monthly um, at the bottom and, and I'll make sure to dive in and show you what that looks like in the app too. When you get into Swerkit, we always like to have optionality into the types of workouts you'll see. What's over on the left-hand side is essentially what Swerkit has been for the last 12 years. Um, what is happening in the right-hand side is really what's unveiling here in the fall where historically it was always kind of a workout player stacking individual workouts and movements together you would select a body part or the time that you have, and then we would provide the workouts. Now we're also expanding into more studio style, just based off you know constant um, polling of our, our users and HR leaders. This was one that always came to mind. So uh, in the fall, we'll release 60 classes um, and they range from dance, kickboxing, Tai Chi, senior movement, body positive. So really excited to, uh, to get those into everybody's hands. And then, you know, as the individual, you might gravitate towards one or the other or mix in each. Um, but now there is that optionality. So ver very excited, um, you know, about, about that being provided. I'll talk about kind of what we're doing in, in your space today. I think our goal is always to be an extension of your wellness program. <clears throat> so partnering with Choctaw uh, on some of the video recordings. I think we're actually going to be out there this week. Um, you know, as I speak here, uh, to, to do some of the video recording and then expand into their wellness offering and provide it to all their members. So again, there's a ton of flexibility into how this app and website shows up on y'all's behalf. Um, and so just think about that as well as like the branding and the text enabled in the app uh, can truly be an extension of, of your program that you're trying to get off, off the ground as well. Integrating with rewards is, is a big piece. We know, you know, the best way to truly get a team to move and engage is incentivizing. 
Uh, and so today we actually integrate with a handful of reward and recognition software. Um, the biggest one we just announced is Award Co. They reward and recognize employees. So today in Swerkit, if you're doing any workouts, meditations, weekly active minutes goals in real time, that can come over into Award Co. and you can get points and recognize for it. Um, if you don't have that, we can still kind of put together that wiring where we will send weekly reports on challenges and active minutes and who's doing the most. Um, and then you as an HR leader can always reward, like we've got a, a partner who gives $5 back to you know anybody doing 150 active minutes. So a ton of flexibility there, um, but we've seen such a massive uptick in the utilization of the tool when people are getting rewarded and incentivized uh, to do so. Money always, always talks when it comes to engaging a workforce. But let's dive in, I, you know, I mentioned the integrations, I'll show you in the app what that looks like. Um, but what we, how we wanna start, and I just wanna tee everybody up, Sarah here, it's moving pretty fast, but what she's saying is she's got weekly goals, she was born in 1978, 180 pounds, um, female, she's got pain in her shoulder, it's moderate, um, and really all she does today is about Pilates once a week. And then so what we'll do through our engine is do two things. We'll recommend a plan uh, for Sarah. Every time she goes in the app, she's got a new thing to do. But then what we'll also provide is, hey, if you use an app like this more for ad hoc workouts or, hey, it's Monday afternoon, I've got an hour and I really need to focus on lower body. What we'll then do for you after you signed up is you've got your plan, but you've also got an ability to kind of self-select workouts as you jump into the app and you wanna go. So you've always got a plan to follow as an option, or if you wanna browse and just find stuff that works best for you, it's always based off some of the inputs that you've provided. And then as you start to use the app, we'll recognize workouts you like, what might be a next fit. So really using AI, um, and our decision recommendations to recommend the best workouts for you. So I'll show you my instance. This is obviously the, the desktop version, but you know, first thing you always see is a weekly progress. Uh, you'll get a sense of kind of today's activity, um, stats by month. And you know, again, when we talk about a week, we always try to showcase the 150 active minutes that's recommended how many workouts an individual is doing, daily step averages. So we've clearly got our steps in today. That is, that is not the norm for me. Um, but what you always have is, again, that plan. This is Stronger Beginner that was recommended for me based off my inputs. If I wanted to go get that started today, I'd go to Stronger Baseline, um, get a preview of some of the workouts I can do. I'll select it. Suggested time based off maybe a beginner. Or my first one in the program is 15 minutes. Say I've got 30 and I'm, I'm feeling you know really energized and I've got the time, I can play some music that's embedded um, or you can play your own uh, if you've got another playlist you like to do and then you literally get started. So it's two clicks away. Um, you'll have the optionality to do some stretch and warm up. Again, you get a preview of some of the workouts that are to come. Um, and then if you think about, okay, how would this app be used within my workforce and team? Um, oftentimes we see folks that want to do a wellness fair or they want to get teams together and do one workout for everybody. You have that option as well. We have got a feature up on the top right called Swerk It Live. Um, if you click live, you then literally become the individual leading the workout today. Uh, so I've got a series of these where I literally just put like an upper body stretch program. So if I ever have calls after lunch, I typically will just do literally like a two minute stretching program, you know, that my whole team will, will be a part of. Um, and the really cool thing is if you're doing this amongst 30 people remotely or in person, um, when you're done, you have the opportunity to send a QR code out. Uh, so it's not like everybody has to be on their app doing the workout as well. Just focus, either be here present in person or watch it on video. Um, and then you can send out or have them scan a QR code and then it comes into their instance and it shows as a workout they've done as well. Um, so really cool feature. We have trainers on our side that can actually run workouts on your behalf. Um, if you've got individuals, you know, at your company and, and they want to be the ones to do it, um, you know, they certainly can as well. Or, you know, there's, there's a ton of variety. If you know somebody in your network that wants to lead a workout, you know, they've got that option too. Um, I will end it here end workout. And then again, like I mentioned, if I wanted to share this with Janet, we just did a workout. She would literally just scan 
the QR code and it will show up in her workout, you know, as, as something that she's done as well. So you'll see that showed up, shows I just did it for a minute, but it's showing up here. Um, and then again, this is some of the examples of other data sources feeding in. Um, if you look at my library of workouts I've done, anytime you see the red heart icon, that's Apple Health data, typically my Whoop band, um, whether it's a Peloton class or weightlifting, um, I thought this one was kind of fun. It, it picked up me golfing a couple of weeks ago. Um, and so, yes, a ton of calories burned. It's like real feel 105 here in Charleston. But um, again, an example of like if, if Swerk, it was doing an active minutes challenge. And if I wasn't just doing workouts in the app, I was kind of doing stuff all over. This is an example of being being able to aggregate some of that data. But then you see anything with the picture is an actual Swerk it workout as well uh, that feeds over. Challenges are always top of mind. Um, we think of challenges kind of in two different ways. Um, global workout cha challenges that you could just join amongst millions of others. And then there's also company and team specific challenges that you can do as well. This one's really cool. We had a leadership offsite in New Orleans. So we put together a quick step challenge for three days. Um, I think the goal per person was like 50,000 steps. We were doing a ton of walking. Um, you know, in real time, you got to see how am I doing, you know, amongst my 50,000 steps, how is the team doing? Um, and then always fund the leaderboard to see, you know, who's doing the most steps, who's covering the most distance. So again, an example of the flexibility, the images you can include on a challenge, the types of challenges, like this is just an example of a step one. Um, but we've also done challenges where, you know, we, we did a meditation challenge a couple of weeks back where you're picking specific meditation courses, like to be a part of this challenge, you had to do one of the seven or so um, meditations that were available here. And so again, it's an example of us aggregating data outside of Swerkit, but then also having a challenge where you're specifically focused on content within the app. Uh, so really a ton of flexibility. You as an admin, you always have the ability to launch these yourself, um, but any one Swerkit client always has a customer success leader assigned to them. Oftentimes, we can be the ones to uh, launch those challenges on your behalf, too. As you scroll through Swerkit, you've got an opportunity to filter by strength, cardio, yoga, stretching, depending on, again, if you are more of the individual that says, I've got an hour of time and I want to stretch, you know, you've got that, that option, too. We'll always highlight some of the new workouts as well, um, recommended based off your activity. Um, and then in the collections is where, again, some of that mindfulness and meditation courses live that we're constantly updating. Um, we even have techniques and breath work for children, kind of doing some of the breath work is really cool as well. Um, and then we've also have our nutrition and wellness library constantly being updated uh, with best practices, tips, um, eating habits and, and chronic disease management. And then at the bottom was the piece I mentioned where we'll always have an Ask a Nutrition article um, updated. So if you go in, We'll give you a kind of preview of the read time you run through and you mark it as read. This then becomes uh, something that shows up as, hey, Neil has read this article. You know, if you're doing any sort of rewarding off of um, content like that. I'll show um, some of the admin experience. I think that's helpful as well as you get a sense of like what this would look like for you all. Swerk it, we're about 28 employees, so we get a sense of how many individuals are in the tool today? What days of week are, are individuals working out and moving? What types of workouts are they doing? You get a, a quick list of ap active days, um, you know, who's meditating, who's viewing different content. You see my name here just based off the one I just read as well. So that's an example of like a cumulative look at everybody, <clears throat> but you also have the ability to report out individuals into groups. So if you're uploading your staff right into um, the app or your team into the app, um, you always can have a unique identifier of either business unit or location that you can filter folks by. So if you want to have like headquarters versus remote workforce, how you want to identify the data, um, it's helpful for two things, right? It's, it's helpful to identify the data and report out by office or leader. Um, but then if you also want to run challenges, you can run challenges by groups like you could do east versus west, 
um, you name it. I'm sure your, your sales or marketing individuals, always competitive. Um, you can have them versus operations, you know, it, it kind of goes on and on. But um, the flexibility to have that reporting, we kind of, you know, like to call it like reporting 2.0. It's not just, hey, here's an engagement metric. It's who's truly using the tool. Um, go to the, you know, the individuals that are using it the most and, you know, ask them what's working for them. How can the rest of the population use it as well? I mentioned challenges. If you ever want to launch a challenge, you literally are right in the dashboard here. It's a couple clicks away. We'll always have recommended challenges, you know, to be able to use um, super flexible. And then we also have a client resources tab always available. Um, what we'll have in here is best practices for launching challenges and questions you have. We also have marketing materials to help announce work it as a, a benefit to you all. So launch kits. Um, and then we will also be a part of any sort of kickoff or, or webinars for your teams as well. That gets me into, you know, some of the services and, and us as a supporting mechanism for your HR teams. Um, you know, I would say the biggest first couple steps, right, if, as you become a, a Swerker partner is, is onboarding you as admins to empower you to make the most of the experience and then really onboarding the employees. So having live demos, ask a trainer, um, you know, making sure that first challenge is introduced. No better way to kick off uh, your Swerker experience than a first challenge. Um, so we always try to tee that up. And then ongoing, we really like to focus on, hey, Here's industry best practices. Here's benchmarks on engagement where you should be. Here's where you are. You know, here's some tips and steps to, to either grow your engagement and see the utilization. We know in our mind, if we have folks engaging at the right rate and using the tool, they're more likely to come back and, and use it again and want to stay with us. So we're super eager to make sure you see the value um, in any sort of investment and partnership with us. Additionally, you know, on our roadmap, I mentioned the studio style. We're also introducing fitness uh, assessments and motion tracking. <clears throat> so literally being able to do a squat in front of the camera and, and be assessed on, is it working? What's, you know, something you can improve on? That's really cool as well. Um, always recommending best practices for launching challenges. Again, increasing some of the engagement you might have. Um, and then Jan and I talked about this, being able to provide some of our webinar content. Swerk it uh, clients get access to our monthly webinar series and we will always have an ask a trainer webinar that's available to admins and, and any individual that's a Swerk it user. Uh, so in August, we've got a yoga session that that's coming up. Um, and then in parallel to this, we'll always do a ask Swerk it kind of 101 series. So if at a minimum, you always have ability to have some sort of content like this, but then also a Swerk It 101 where you can go on, ask questions, speak to other admins or leaders that might be clients of ours as well. You brainstorm what's working for them and you know what ideas you can have to make the most of the experience too. We'll also provide live classes, workouts. So um, you know some of our clients may want us again to lead a stretch or uh, workout. So that's always an option um, as well. So just something to think about. And then we do master class series too. Um, if there's any sort of topic you want to focus on, like spine, mindfulness, breath work, you know we're able to provide that as well. Highlighting some of the team, you know, you've got me today. Um, you can always reach out. It's neil at swerkit.com. Uh, Tori, Ricky, and Ryan will all be at the annual event in September. I know they're super eager to, to meet you all. Um, I will be at another conference, but we'll be represented well. Um, we'll make sure that you've got content, um, you know, from this session that you're able to access, but then we'll also be there in person um, with some swag and giveaways and, and super excited to, uh, to meet you all. I'll make sure in the deck I've got case studies and results that you can always review, um, but I'll stop us, Janet, here on this slide so you've got everyone's contact information. Again, really appreciate the time. Um, I love the format, love the ability to uh, to kind of talk about what's trending in the market, um, and then always love talking about Swerkit because I, I use it myself and it's, it's a fun tool. So thanks again, Janet. Neil, can you hear me okay? I can. Wow, this is such a really cool app, and I love the way that we are able to look at your account and see, I mean, from calories that you burn, um, to be able to just use your uh, your phone, right, and link it 
from your health right to the Swork It app. I'm just, it's incredible. Yeah. It's super excited. I um, also um, took a screenshot of all the webinars that you're going to be doing and would love to share that with our members That's as well. Um, so more details to come, Nahara members. Super exciting. Uh, Neil's team is going to be at the annual conference this year in September. I really encourage you to stop by. It's a super cool tool that I feel all organizations really need to look at. We um, really need to take care of our team members and their well-being. So thank you, Swarkit, for creating this incredible app. I appreciate that. And for those who want to reach out to Neil, it's neil at swarkit.com. Neil, thank you so much. Uh, it was great having you today, and we look to working with you in the future. Yes, thank you, Janet. Thank you all again for the time.